What do you think, guys? Oh yeah, that's a better one. Oh, oh god. Oh, it's still got him. Mm -hmm. What is up, MFers? Today's video, I'm going to tell you all about what swim baits to apply in what situation. Whether it be hard swim baits, soft swim baits, from the top of the water column all the way to the bottom in 30, 40 plus feet of water, there is a bait to meet your situation and help you catch more fish. The large majority of fishermen that try to go out and fish these bigger size swim baits, I think have a ton of misconceptions. They don't draw simple parallels between their conventional tackle and these big giant swim baits and where they should apply them. They simply wanna hop on whatever the next hot bait is, the most expensive bait, or even some of the bigger baits and simply think that's gonna help them catch more fish. The result is they go out on the water, they throw it, don't have much success, and they go right back into fishing their conventional methods like the majority of other anglers and catch the same fish that the majority of anglers catch. Today's video, I'm going to break down all of these swim baits that I like to use from the top of the water column down to the bottom, hard, soft, wake baits, quiet baits, bright baits and bright colors, supernatural baits, and everything in between. You're not gonna wanna miss it. So you guys know I'm obsessed with swim baits. I have, I don't even know how many thousands of dollars worth of swim baits. I'm not bragging about that. A lot of that has come with a ton of trial and error and just flat out wasting a lot of money on swim baits that don't apply to situations in my fishery. Now I'm lucky enough that I get to fish for a living and travel around and really fish a ton of different varieties of fisheries, just in Texas alone. But for a lot of you guys, you're fishing a very specific body of water or a type of body of water, depending on whatever region you're in. And really, the difference between northern strain bass and Florida strain bass can be huge as well and have a big effect on what baits you should go out and use. Okay, so back behind me, right here, I have baits listed from the top of the water column to the bottom of the water column, where you can fish them, soft baits on this side, hard baits on this side. We got some weedless baits that are great for grass and heavy cover right here in the middle. You don't need to go out and buy every single one of these baits. These are just examples of baits that I like to use in these situations. So let's start to talk about that first off. When I started fishing these swim baits, I was like a lot of people in that I had to get over the idea of just throwing a big bait and getting the right tackle for it before I could even figure out where in the water column fish would eat what type of bait or what had the best action. Once I got to that progression in my learning curve and I started to get some of these, these S waiver, the seven inch S waiver, um, Sneaky Pete, um, some of those shad baits in that seven inch range. And then of course I, I also fished the Sixth Sense Flow Glider and the Speed Glide a lot too. And those were all baits were, were hard baits, they were gliding style baits. And what I really noticed with those baits was they're, they're good, they catch fish, and I was getting bites from fish that had never seen baits that were bigger than your traditional crankbait, swim jig, stuff like that, or topwater. But the problem was they're all baits that really don't fish well lower than two or three feet in the water column. So then I started branching out to some bigger baits. Um, I got some Huddleston swim baits. I got some of the big Hinkle Shad swim baits you guys have seen. I got some line through swim baits. I messed around with the, the, the Mega Bass Mag Draft a little bit. And I started to realize that where are these baits fish in the water column and how well their action was and how you could fish them and feel them with your rod tip made all the difference in the world to how effective they were, especially when targeting the same types of cover and structure you're fishing with your traditional jig top water, a worm, a spinner bait. And really when I started applying the same principles of how the fish were acting and where they were at in the water column that I used in my traditional fishing to big baits, that's when I really saw those days where I wasn't going out to try to catch one fish anymore. I was actually using these baits to not only catch five, 10, 15 fish a day, 
but also getting bites that no one else was getting because of these the naturalism and, and just the size and drawing power and the capabilities of these baits. So I think the first thing we're gonna talk about is seasonally what to look for. And a lot of it's going to be based on a factor that I don't like to talk about a whole lot because I don't think it's always important, which is water temperature. But we need to understand and draw those same parallels between our conventional gear and our big swim bait gear. Let's start with talking about seasonally a little bit with water temperature. So let's think about this. When we go out to the water in the winter, if you're lucky enough to live south far enough that there's no ice on your lakes in the winter. So that's who this is gonna apply for, which is gonna be the majority of people watching this based on my viewership that I see. Thank you everyone that watches. But for those of you guys that are lucky enough to fish in the south, the water's still going to get cold, especially if you're up in the Ozark region even. Some of it'll freeze, but you guys know that fish will bite all the way through the winter. How are we catching those fish in the winter? We're using suspending jerk baits, fish extremely slow a lot of times, right? Or we're dragging a jig uh, or a swing head really, really slow with a crawdad imitating bait, generally, right? Or we're fishing for suspended fish that are being caught on Alabama rigs, little tiny kitex on ball heads, stuff like that. So that's what we need to apply to our baits, both in the action of the bait caused by the tail and this, more importantly, the speed in which we are retrieving these baits. So let's talk about th the entire water column during these seasons. A lot of people ask me when the best time to throw a glide bait. You know, glide baits are the biggest trend right now in all fishing, of course, and, and I, I think anyways, as far as bass fishing, and the, the mystique of getting these, these big glide baits that'll catch a bigger than average fish, and they'll catch a lot of tournament fish. You guys have seen me just freaking wailing on them lately and for years with the glide bait. They're extremely effective, but I get asked all the time, when is the best time of year to fish a glide bait? So, you can actually catch fish on a glide bait year round. You just have to think of the bait a little bit differently. So what I mean by that is this Chad Shad style bait, this short shad choppy style bait is one that you've seen me fish in the swimming pool with a chopping mechanic extremely quickly, side to side, like a walking bait within a couple feet of the surface. But you can actually slow things down and fish it a lot like a traditional jerk bait. This bait will sink extremely slow, which is what you want in the winter. And we're thinking about what's happening to these shad in the winter, and that is a lot of them are dying slowly. So they will be slow sinking. So this is perfect, but we're not gonna fish it the same mechanics and the same speed and cadence we're going to when we're thinking about fishing it in water that's below 55, 60 degrees, or especially down into the 30s or 40s. A great way to fish this is in the exact same place. We think about how effective a jerk bait is on channel swings and uh, timber, standing timber that's on channel swings or, or deeper drop off nearby, bluff ends, bluff banks. You can fish the same style of bait, this shad style chopping bait, the exact same way, where you let this thing sink down to the fish three, four, five feet, twitch, 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 stop it, let it sink down slow, very, very slow, and just fish that same super slow erratic action with these same baits. Now for the guys that are traditional jig draggers, if you like to go out to a hard bottom, drop off a point, um, a ledge, something like that to fish for your fish in the winter, that's when you really need to start to think about dragging a bait with a wedge tail on the bottom, just like a jig. These wedge tail baits, which were originally made popular by a Huddleston, they will have a very, very slow, very natural swim to them. A general rule of thumb with a soft bait, a natural soft bait, is when the bite's tougher, no matter what time of the year, a soft bait can outproduce a hard bait. Just a general rule of thumb. Not always true, but something to keep in mind. But anyways, cold water under 55, 60 degrees, winter pre-spawn, this wedge tail is absolutely the way to go in my opinion. And you can not only catch fish dragging this on the bottom as slow as you possibly can, whether it be over the top of a, a rock pile, something, just fishing it slow, or for live scope guys, forward facing guys, 
you can fish these baits um, down to the fish wherever you want in the water column. I've caught fish on Huddleston's, this Savage Gear guy that I think it's RTF is what the, it's called the material and everything. It's a, it's a newer bait, 4D pulse tail maybe. I'll, I'll have to look at it and I'll, I'll put a link to it below. But these baits, especially this Huddleston, uh, this is a rate of fall 12. It's a faster sinking bait, um, are going to get down in the water column to fish a lot quicker. Same with this guy right here, this uh, hog hunter, kind of a new take. They bought the mat lure, the old Magnum trout, not mat lures, the old Magnum trout mold. But anyways, these are great examples of baits that you can fish in place in super cold water of that super slow moving bottom bait or even fish it in a lot of the same areas where you're throwing a suspended fish with a jigging spoon or a little Kitek. So let's start talking about the next giant phase in a bass's seasonal movement, and that is the spawn phase, of course. This is super vague because all different types of bodies of water are different when it comes to spawn time, but the thing to think about is this time of year, the fish are getting more aggressive, especially some of those warm trends in the pre-spawn, and you start throwing a lot of baits that are like a, a chatter bait, a lipless crank, a swim jig, start getting bit on a topwater bait, but you have to think about how you're fishing those baits around whatever piece of cover. Obviously a chatter bait and a lipless bait will work around not grassy areas, but you're gonna be throwing them near grass the large majority of the time. So that's when I start to apply these types of baits, these weedless style baits. And these three all do very different things. This guy right here um, is uh, working class zero. I think it's a citizen. This guy can be drugged through the grass, worked extremely slow. You can fish this thing a lot of different ways, honestly. You can fish it on, on bars and stuff, um, dragging it in the post spawn. This line through right here, I think it's a smash tech. Um, you can fish it on a keel weighted hook and, and really just like this guy right here, uh, ADOT fits it really well. You can fish it over the top of the grass. You can throw it over the top of beds once we start to get to bed season. All three of these baits will work extremely well. This is the Defiant 210. They'll work extremely well plowing through that same cover to get you a different bite and get you a bigger bite. If you're a, a bush guy, Cole, you a bush guy? No. Cole's not a bush guy. But uh, you can fish this bait, this Defiant, extremely well through shallow cover, even though it has a top hook. It's a top hook bait. This, it doesn't have the top hook in it right now, but you can also fish it with a treble. But it fishes through bushes really well. It skips really well. You can skip it under overhanging trees, whatever. But we need to start thinking in these situations about how we're fishing these other styles of conventional baits during the spawn. A lot of guys like to throw um, a little prop bait over the top of bait over the top of beds. A lot of guys throw a buzz bait. These guys can be absolutely deadly during that spawn phase. Obviously, I will throw them all summer long um, when the fish are hot and we need a topwater bait. But the great thing about these baits is they have that stall factor, just like that prop bait, where you can twitch it with the prop bait and let it sit over their heads forever. And that's a big grass fishing thing in Florida thing, um, but people do it with poppers as well. But you can wake these baits. This is a seven inch MS slammer. This is called an evergreen noisy dicks. Emphasis on the dicks. These are both wood baits that have a really natural clacking noise to them. Drives the spawning fish absolutely crazy. Just another option to throw during that period. One more bait that is really popular that gets a lot of bites around the spawn is this little mag draft. It's great when you can see stumps that are just plain. You can see them just below the surface, but you don't see any beds or anything. You can blind cast with this guy, or this is another one I like even more than the mag draft. It's called the skinny bear. It's got a really good head throb to it, but you can throw these style of baits over places where a bed should be near and think about fishing a square bill uh, or a spinner bait next to a piece of standing timber you can see, or even flipping a jig to it. Same exact situation when you could throw a bait just like this. This bait sneaky wins tournaments all over the country in that time period. Let's start to talk about the post spawn phase leading into summer. That's when I really like to fish a big long profile glide bait. When fish get off the spawn, think about the places they like to hold. They'll immediately start to hold on grass edges. They'll suspend in standing timber. They'll get out to some of those secondary and main lake hard points, 
hard seawalls and start looking for the shad spawn a lot of times. And you gotta think about the baits that we use traditionally to target those post-spawn fish. A big one always growing up was a stick bait, a Senko, throwing it at suspended fish in timber or suspended fish on grass lines. Um, and, and think about that, that's a bait, it's a natural, slow moving bait for a fish that's lazy, just got done spawning, isn't thinking a ton about eating, but if it is gonna make a mistake and eat a bait, it's probably gonna want something that's easy to catch or going to really replenish them like a big bait in one bite. Another huge bait for me has been a 10 inch worm. And where are you gonna fish that? A lot of the same areas. And then moving out to brush piles, grass points, hard spots on the bottom. Um, you start thinking about throwing a 10 to 15 foot diving crankbait on some of those hard spots for shad spawn fish getting the post spawn, dragging a jig on some immediate cover, whether that be a rock pile, dragging it through a road bed, something like that. And when that starts to go down, I start to apply these baits in the same way that I'm catching fish on those baits. So for the Cinco style fish that are suspended in timber or on grass lines, I wanna mimic the same type of, of movement. I want something that's gonna come through the water column slow and in the same theory as a 10 inch worm, I want something that's gonna be a longer profile bait. That is when a six cents draw is absolutely perfect. You can weight this thing a little bit. Um, out of the package, it'll slow float. So you can work it down to three or four feet and then it'll just slowly float back up. You can weight it so it dang near suspends. It's another bait that you can sneaky throw on beds and get it to stop on the beds and sometimes they'll react to it better. Depth slide swimmer 250. These are two different types of baits where I can just put in my hand and just go fish it on, start at the main lake point, fish the channel bank on the, the grass all the way back, throw it at a su suspended, um, an isolated piece of timber on the way back to the, to the spawning pockets. So they'll be on their way out, of course. They're just great baits for fishing that type of cover. Caught so many big fish right in that post spawn. Uh, period. It's the same exact principles as that slower moving plastic, whether that be a, a big six, seven inch Senko or a 10 inch worm. This is your bait right here. So as I started to allude to a little bit there, let's talk about the shad spawn style fish. So these can be two different types of fish I've noticed. They're all gonna be shallow. Shad, the big gizzard shad don't really like to spawn. It doesn't seem deeper than seven or eight feet but a lot of them will spawn in that five to eight feet. And so for those style of fish, I love to throw a bait that gets down there and you can grind on the bottom. This one has been sneaky effective, the six cent sweep. And it's a bait that I can also throw to fish on pan optics in the summer that are way down in the column. You can pair it with whatever size six cents uh, jig head, has a really good hook on it. Um, this is a three quarter. You can fish on a quarter if you want because you make a quarter with a five odd hook, but there's three eighths, half, whatever. And then this, this burrito guy also fishes the same style where you get it down there and you just grind it in just like you would a, a C10 crankbait, a 5XD, whatever, and just grind that thing through those same shell beds, hard clay points and stuff like that. Um, the Clash series of baits that's gotten really popular from DRT, they're impossible to get, so I'm not gonna really show them too much, but a Clash 9 or a Tiny Clash, very good in that setting. And then that's really when these shad style baits come into play as well. And a lot of times I'm fishing these, these clay reservoirs that have clay points, and that generally means off-colored water during that shad spawn as well. A bone-colored glide bait fish up in the water column. A lot of you guys know, you know, they get on that spook bite up top. This is another great way to catch fish that are keying in on that large profile bait. A lot of you watch Lee Livesey went on a spook really high in the water column. He was fishing one, two feet of water. These baits will get giant bites in those same situations. He was low key throwing a big swim bait and a lot of the same stuff too, but spook got all the credit, but I'm just saying a big bone colored bait. And really this bone color works and water that's three or four or five foot visibility just as well. Um, I'll link these down below. They're absolutely killer in that situation. Fished high in the water column. I don't know what else to say about it. If you got shad spawn going on, these are the style of baits you wanna throw during that season. So moving on into the summer period, we start to think about middle of summer. A lot of people are going one or two different ways. You're either fishing offshore 
for brush pile fish, fishing for schooling fish on points, stuff like that. Or a lot of guys are going up shallow fishing for shade line fish, just a shallow reservoir in general. A lot of your fish are gonna obviously have to stay up shallow, but you're fishing a lot of isolated cover up shallow. And I'm gonna give you baits for both of those situations. First and foremost, this guy is absolutely killer. That's when you want a topwater rat style bait, an MS slam or something like that. You can go into a lot of these areas where guys are traditionally pitching a jig or throwing a frog, come back behind them with this right here. Um, I actually just got another new bait that's a weedless version of a crawling style bait. If you guys are familiar with crawler baits, um, that I'm not gonna say is good because I haven't used it, but I think it's gonna be killer for this situation. But again, super natural. Obviously fish don't just sit around eating rats, but they are opportunistic feeders. This thing can mimic whatever just fell out of the tree, off the bank, and honestly, these style baits will work in water colors of any type. I've caught them in dirt, muddy water. I prefer it to be cleaner and really the cleaner the better. Uh, just to have fish see this big profile, this big loud profile. This is a PB rat. It's got two joints. There's a lot of clack going on. Muddy water too. This evergreen noisy dicks once again. Super loud bait, but a very natural swim the fish just don't see. So for guys that are gonna go the other direction in the middle of summer, you're gonna be fishing offshore a lot. Obviously you guys know I throw this Hinkle Shad a lot on live scope for fish over the top of brush piles or suspended fish off the edge of some points. I can't tell you guys how many times I've caught giant fish that wouldn't eat anything else on these giant shad glides that you can't even get a bite on a drop shot in a lot of these areas. You can't get a bite on a 10 inch worm or a jig or a swing head, a Nico rig. It's, it's crazy what the, the amount of pressure that's, that's gone on and happened with, with all the people getting into fishing, which is great, but it's so hard to catch fish sometimes in these situations. You can wait these two baits to get down there I see too many people just going out and buying Hinkle Shads and going to throw them in the middle of the lake and this thing slow floats or they fish it a foot below the surface and they're like, why am I not catching anything? Well, why aren't you applying the same tactics? Like you're not gonna go throw a 10 inch worm across the top of the water or you're, you're not gonna throw a one foot diving crankbait on top of the water in 25 feet for fish that are on the bottom, right? So stop trying to buy baits just cause they're supposedly good baits and start fishing them where the fish are. Crazy theory, I know. But that's when I'll start to fish some of these baits as well. Um, we got this trash fish, you can get down there. It's, it's a really badass big, I think this is the eight inch size. We got a new little line through coming from Six Sense that we're gonna have in a wide variety of different sink rates. One of those is gonna be a medium sink, one's gonna be a heavy sink. Gonna fish extremely well. Uh, this exact bait I actually fired out, as you can see, our prototypes are all bone white, so not the best natural profile, but first cast I ever made with this one, when we got it right, I caught a fish on it, uh, out of a school on Rayburn in about eight inches of visibility. So simply throwing these baits, the first cast through a school, or after you've drug your crankbait or worm through there and they've gotten kind of conditioned to it, can get you another bite, it can get you the biggest bite. Very, very simple theories there. Now as fall kind of comes around in late summer especially, the fish get so dialed and keyed in on bait fish, and especially bait fish high up in the water column. Now that can be relative to your fishery. High up in the water column on a super deep body of water that gets, that's super clean, gets hundreds of feet deep, might mean the bait ball is 30 feet below the surface, and that's high in the water column. But for most fisheries, even clean fisheries that get no deeper than 70, 80 feet. A lot of those bash will be pushing bait fish up in the water column. And that's the time when I love to, to throw non-traditional baits at these schooling fish that are either not very big and you need to pick the biggest one out of the school, or they've just getting pounded with pressure and they've seen every walking topwater bait, they've seen every jig head minnow, they've seen all the, the traditional baits people fire at these schoolers that's when a very, very quickly fished chopping style bait is the best to me. These are the dog days of summer and into the fall. We're talking about fish with a super high metabolism that are trying to eat as much as they possibly can. 
You don't want to fish this thing any slower than Mach 37. You want this thing cooking through the water column because those bass are just, they're, they're taking down as much food as they possibly can. And honestly, even on days when they won't eat anything else, we've been crushing them on these baits, but the only way to catch fish on them a lot of times is as quick as you can chop them. Even quicker than you can chop them sometimes where you're just basically burning it through the water column so they can barely get a look at it. Absolutely key. This is the Chad Shad. I like that one a lot. This is the Six Sense Speed Glide. This is the Six Sense Flow Glider with that little joint modification I showed you guys a few videos back. Hundreds, maybe thousands of you guys have purchased these since then and have been crushing fish on this bait. This is a very good versatile bait. You can fish anytime when the water's warm and, and catch them, but that's been great. You guys have been crushing them as well. And then once we get into the late fall, when the water's cooling down more and more, we start to see a lot of the same movements come back in that were, were kind of the same in the spring when the fish were moving up to spawn. So the bass will originally, they'll move in on some of these and grass lakes, of course, they'll funnel their way back. So they'll get in drains, they'll get on grass edges. That's when you guys start to really apply a lot of these weedless baits. And then of, of course, isolated cover, just junk fishing in the fall, fishing a big natural glide bait over isolated brush piles, isolated points, timber, whatever that a bass can use uh, to ambush is absolutely killer. And again, a way to get a bigger bite. Now one sneaky bait that I'll talk about, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I missed out on here. And this is not just apply to trout fisheries. This is obviously a trout pattern, but this is a rate of fall zero Huddleston. And at first glance, you're going to be on the website like, well, do I want my bait to sink slow or do I want it to sink a little bit quicker and I'll get a Roth 12 if I want it faster. They even have a Roth 16, but which sink rate do I want? Well, Roth 5 and Roth 12s work great. You can fish a 5 high in the water column, 2, 3, 4 feet below the surface on a nice slow retrieve. You can fish a 12 down deeper and drag it like we got with this guy right here, fishing it like a jig. But this is a special bait because it applies a lot of the same theories um, as the rate of stall stuff with the topwater baits. This is essentially a topwater bait. It's great in the warmer months. If you're fishing a clean body of water, in the warmer months where you, maybe you don't have live scope, but the fish will suspend, they'll get around grass lines, they'll get around shallow cover, but the cleaner the water, the better. This rate of fall zero Huddleston, if you got trout, obviously, that's gonna be a great pattern, but any bait fish pattern, if you don't have trout, slow wine on the surface. This thing will sit and just tail wag like three inches below the surface you can fish it so slow and i'm trying to even think of what it's it's comparable to like an ultra slow sink spy bait that is so natural and you can fish it so slow and steady through the water column but you have the realism of not looking like a little piece of plastic with blades on it it looks like a damn fish with fins just a a theory to think about so that's seasonally what I do all winter long, I get the most basic questions every day. Is a soft bait or a hard swim bait better? Well, there's a lot of factors that go into that. And hopefully I answered a lot of questions. If you guys have any more questions, please just comment right down below. I'll get back to as many of you guys as I possibly can. And I thank you so much for watching this video. I'm gonna link some more swim bait videos down below on the end screen right here so you can go check some of those out. Hopefully learn some stuff as well and see some badass fish catches. I'll catch you guys very soon. I'm out of here. Peace.